Hello and welcome to My Own Worst Enemy. It is Unboxing Day again at Armchair Dragoons. And if you don't know, I've mentioned this before, but Armchair Dragoons does Unboxing Day uh, once a month. Basically a, a whole day of war gamers unboxing various board games and it's just a lot of fun. But this, this Unboxing Day is a lot more fun for me because I finally, finally, I am holding Horse and Musket Volume 4. I've been waiting for this one for quite some time. I love the horse and musket system. It is awesome. I love the way it plays. I've done a gameplay of, it was horse and musket dawn of an era. I think it was the, the battle of killer cranky. If I remember, I don't think it went too well, but it was, it was, it was fun. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. I do own, I actually own all three previous volumes. I only own the first one though in physical format. I own two and three in PDF print and play format. Kind of glad I waited to get two and three though because I supposedly, and I don't think supposedly, I can already tell just by looking, the components, the rule books, everything has been updated to, to be improved. So we're gonna take a look at that and see just what those improvements are and if they really are improved. So, and not that the, uh, the original components were bad, they just, uh, they just needed some tweaking, they needed some love. And I think I mentioned the, um, in the first one, the playthrough I did, I wasn't a huge fan of the artwork. So we're gonna see what improvements have been made. And to do that, I have next to me my copy of Horse and Musket Dawn of an Era. So we can refer to this and we will, in fact, I'm probably just gonna leave it sitting. Well, let's just get it out of the way. First, let's go through the goodies and then I'll uh, we'll compare and see what those improvements might look like. So yes, uh, volume four, 1768 through 1796. So why, why was I waiting for this one so much and, and why am I so excited it's here? Well, because Tides of Revolution. I love the American Revolutionary War period. I love gaming that and look at the battle. So <laughs> there's a lot of Revolutionary War battles in this volume and we even start getting up into some early napoleonic stuff it looks like so maybe there's a preview there of what's to come in volume five let's hope I, yeah but i am really excited for this one so let's let's crack right on in because this one's going to get to the table i uh, probably next <laughs> so, and right in well okay the first thing and everyone knows it's blue panther so um it's it's like a um I love the smell of Blue Panther ink in the morning. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I'm getting right now, but that's okay. We like that. Right off, I'm opening this up and I'm seeing cards. Now, I don't know, I don't remember cards in the dawn of an era. And I, so that, this may be something new. Interesting. Now these cards, they look like they, they, I don't know if you draw these in the battle or maybe you pick one at the beginning and you can use it, but the cards themselves, these are the little mini cards. They're, they're it's a standard size. I think Gloomhaven has the same size of a card in, in the game, and I can't it, I can't remember what the size is. It is a standard size though, and these cards are they're not the cheap paper cards. These are the actual you know the glossy, thick, nice cards. So these will hold up over time. Will I sleeve these? Honestly, if it's just something, and this is a subject for probably a, a, a solo battle discussion, but if it's a card that I'm gonna use a lot, like if you're having to draw these cards a lot in a game, yeah, I'm gonna sleeve them. If it's something you just maybe pull at the beginning of a scenario, probably not because that you're not gonna use these cards a lot and it's not like you're gonna know what card is coming up, or it's not gonna matter, I should say, what card's coming up. Like, my biggest gripe with, with sleeving cards or not sleeving cards is if you use the cards a lot and they get a ding or a bump or a crease, you're going to know what that card is before you pull it. You'll see it sitting on top of that crease in the corner and you'll say like, oh, I know that is the artillery roll, one extra combat die. And I hate that. <laughs> yeah, so we'll find out if I'm going to sleeve those or not. All right, let's slide this over here. Get that out of the way. Well, the first thing we're going to do is jump right into the rule book. And it's the same, it's the same paper, it's the same print. Well, okay, <laughs> I'm already getting excited. Well, I'm not, already, I'm not getting excited, I'm already excited. I'm getting more excited, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, so I open this up, it's, I was, what I was gonna say is it's the same paper, type of paper, it's the same, I don't know, it does feel a little bit thicker maybe. Uh, so the, the, the actual material I don't think has changed, I don't think, let's see. 
let's let's not waste any time. Let's let's go ahead and compare as we go along here. I'm gonna pull out the horse and musket dawn of an era manual here just to see. Now I think the paper's the same. And it's it's nice thick quality paper. So but where I got almost sidetracked was the uh these are the scenario. What am I looking at here? I thought I was looking at the uh the rule book. I'm not. This is actually the uh the scenario book. And this is the scenario book. So my brain knew what I was doing, uh my subconscious didn't, or is that vice versa? Anyway, why I was shocked almost, if you will, as you can see, this is the new scenario book, Tides of Revolution. And so what was missing from this, the original scenario book, was the unit placement on the board. And so the way the original scenarios worked, it would, you know, you had the terrain layout of your, of your map board and your forces are down here and you would have to hunt and peck, you know, where on the map to place them, E5, like you were playing Battleship, E5. It looks like here in the new version, I'm going to set the scenario book here so we can refer to that. In the new version, your units, uh, you're still, uh, do you still get the hex numbers? No, actually you don't. So you're getting, interesting. So instead of getting hex numbers, you're getting letter identifiers of where to put these forces. I think... L1, DR, L1. I guess these are these are the actual units, the, um, the type of unit that you're gonna put out. Anyway, the important thing is you have everything on the board now. So you can look at it quickly and see where your terrain goes, where your units go. I think this is gonna speed set up a lot. I think you're gonna be able to set a game up a lot faster than, than you did before. And then just looking in the scenario book, since we're here and I'm seeing Revolutionary War stuff and I'm getting distracted yet again. <laughs> That's a good thing. The special rules are all here, your victory conditions. Um, so that pretty much, for the most part, it is the same sort of thing that we had with the uh, previous editions with, again, improvements. And there's just some uh, more background information on these battles, which you know I love to see in a war game. All right, that is the scenario book, which I like a lot, as if you couldn't tell. Now we're gonna get that rule book out. I thought I had the rule book, but this is the rule book. And so this is the core rule book. And I think, so with the, let's see. Oh, look at that, that's nice. You have a nice, let's see, let's get the uh, Dawn of an Era rule book. We open that up. So here you see a nice table of contents that was missing from the original rule book. The, again, the paper, the print, all that's the same. Maybe a little bit, I don't know why, but the paper feels a little nicer to me. Uh, we get in here though, and already I can see there's a lot more color and, uh, I, so I'm looking over here at the, uh, these are going to be the, the counters, a preview of what the counter sheets are going to look like. And already I'm seeing more information on the counters. That, I think, is an, another awesome improvement to see those, to see that extra information on the counters. We'll, we'll look at those when we get there. Well, we're going to look at them right now. Okay, <laughs> I can't, I'm getting distracted. So you still have the unit type. Uh, you have color, morale points, and volume. I'm not sure what volume is. And victory points. So interesting. That looks good. And so the graphics here, I want an actions table. I'm seeing a lot more graphics. So if we go back and look at the, the original Dawn of an Era rule book. Yeah, I mean, th this is, oh my gosh, this is so much nicer. I'm just flipping through here. This rule book, it's, it's a little, that's eh, almost the same size. Let's see how many pages do we have? 14. No, it's the same size. So it's about the same size. It's just, I don't know. This looks more impressive to me. <laughs> this, looks, this looks a lot more professional than, than, the, uh, than the first one. Let's just keep flipping through here. So we have our movement, our combat rules. Uh, the rules are, I mean, this is not a hard game to learn. This is a fairly easy game to learn. The rules are laid out clearly and concisely. That's a word. And then uh, we have special rules, victory conditions, formation rules. I just, I just love the color in this. I've done such a 
Good job with, with updating the rule book. This is nice. Random events. Um, I'm wondering if that's, no, that's not. Other optional rules. We have all of our optional rules in one place. The nationality rules you'll remember from previous volumes. The using miniatures, there's, an, there's a section on that. Oh, an example of play. So I don't think we, I don't think we had this in the first one. Yeah, no. So this is another addition, which is, which is more than welcome. I, I've said it before in these videos. I love to see a good example of play, and you get that here. And not only do you get that, but you get it. I mean, you get these graphics to go with it. So you're getting, you're getting visuals with you know what's happening, and that this is a nice looking example of play to me this is awesome so yeah that's so this book is a little longer than 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 volume one a little longer and that's because it includes this this awesome example of play so good stuff that is nice to see so let's go ahead and get in a little further and i'm going to set the counters over there and we're going to pull out this is it's like a player's aid card Okay, so hang on one second. I'm gonna pull out. See, I'm trying not to get too excited, but so here's some of the older um, player aid cards. Here's the, uh, it's one sheet. You get, you know, your actions allowed, your turn sequence, your battles charts, your terrain charts, and you know, here's your turn record and whatnot. Well, so this is an actual player's aid card. That was more paper when I showed you. It was a little thicker than paper. Oh, wow. So this is the, <laughs> I love the way they've done this. So this is, you know, you had your small battles, you had your grand battles and your just regular size, but normal size battles, I guess you'd call it. But this this table is nice. So this, this makes it much easier to just kind of, you know, I'm gonna play a small battle boom and here's your, your close combat values, your ranges, your, uh, this is, this is gonna be used a lot. That's, that's nice to see. And I almost missed it. I, it went right by it, but that's the terrain chart. So that's really cool, the way they've got that laid out, the um, the graphics are laid out. Your actions table, yeah, this is nice. And here, of course, is your optional rules and your nationality. Nationality, optional nationality rules is what I'm trying to say if I can talk. Yeah, okay, cool. This. Whoever was in charge of updating the components, you get a gold star at minimum. <laughs> Tides of Revolution module rulebook. What is this? This looks like, this is specific to um, volume four. So this is, um, it's almost like a player's aid card itself. It's it's not paper, it's that thick, um, the thicker print that, you, that typically you find a player's aid card on. I'm not sure what word I'm looking for because I'm still excited uh, digging through the components that will come to me after I uh, record this, I'm sure. So it's basically telling you, you know, what you're going to get in this volume and the counters, the changes to the core rules. So this is nice. I really like this too. Art notes or art note. And then of course your credits and special scenario rules and some cool artwork. All right. And now we get to the counters, and this is what I was really, really wanting to see. Because like I said, I, when I did the unboxing and the playthrough, I, I think one of the things I like least about the game, and when I say I like liked it the least, it, I still liked what I had. <laughs> I still like the counters. But looking at these, my immediate reaction is the artwork, I think, is the same, which uh, I wasn't a huge fan of the artwork, but it, it works for this game. So these are the Blue Panther counters. These are the uh, these are the um, thicker wooden like uh, laser cut, I believe. I want to. I mean, they're not laser cut. I, I've always wondered if if Blue Panther. And I think I've said in the past they are laser cut. But as I look at these, I'm seeing the little little tabs on the counter. So maybe they're not really laser cut. Let's punch one of these out. Let's just grab one of the. We'll just grab. You know who we're gonna grab? We're gonna grab. Let's see if I can find. George Washington. <laughs> so we're going to punch out George Washington. And it's hard to see, so I'm going to bring it up closer to the camera. And I'll probably have to put it, use one hand here if you can see. So that there's the George Washington counter. And you can see that is nice artwork. It, it's, I, I don't know, I'll, the leaders I don't really mind as much as the, um, let's get a little closer with the counter sheet. So, you know, if you look at the 
artwork for your your uh, rifles and your your artillery it's it's uh the symbols i don't know i still don't know if I'm, I'm a big fan of the choice of artwork the counters are done very well i'm not complaining I, I don't think it's terrible artwork and i hate to say i just when i say i don't like it i don't want to give the impression that it's horrible artwork i just it's not really my thing though but it works for this uh i can't say that i want to create some custom counters at some point who knows one thing I do see that I like on here, like I said, was the additional information. So where's my tweezers? We'll take a look at the lower left and right corners. You have some added information. Of course, you have those. And this is what we saw in the scenario book where it kind of threw me for a loop. But I'm pretty sure these are the, the, uh, the two-letter identifiers that tell you which terrain hex to put these units in. You know, So you'd have, I'm sure that's artillery and militia. Now that I'm looking at it, nice, nice, nice. And we'll take a quick look at the other counter sheet just to see what's in. That's nice. So this is the formation. That looks like formations. And oh, yeah. So we can look at the back of these. Let's do that real quick. Because the backs are just as nice as the fronts. So yeah, um, that's the counter sheets. And is it an improvement? Absolutely. This game. This game is an it, it has been improved, and I like I said, I'm really glad I have waited on volumes two and three. And actually, I'm going to tell you right now that I am probably going, and I'm I'm regretting the way I bought this now because there was an option to buy all four, I think, of these at once, and I think it was a I think it was a special price for that. I can't remember. Doesn't matter. I don't mind giving Holland Spiel money because Holland Spiel, what a company. I think they do a fine job. Holland Spiel is one of those companies that puts out some really, really good games. And I, it's, um, it's people have complained about the components of these things. I don't know why. I like Blue Panther. And like I said, this, this upgrade is just that. It is a nice, nice, nice upgrade to the series. And so what I was going to say is I'm glad I waited to get volumes two and three, but I think I'm going to have to rebuy one again as well. <laughs> it's, it's that it's that big of a change for me from what I've seen from, you know, the original printed material to this this new stuff. So kudos to Holland Spill. And I think this one was is worth the wait. And I so looking at this board, I know which battle I'm going to do a video on. I know which one's going to be on my own worst enemy. And if anybody knows me and they, they I, I doubt that anybody knows me well enough to know just by looking at these battles, which one I'm going to pick. Maybe we'll have a guessing game. It's, if you knew me, you know, my background, it would be very easy for you to pick which scenario you will see on the table and I, when i do i'll tell you why i picked it but it'll be obvious to those who know me anyway i'm getting off track that's a look at horse and musket tides of revolution volume four from holland spill designed by sean chick anyway thanks for watching this unboxing and please come back to watch the uh, the playthrough of this i think it is going to be awesome and as always if you like what i do please consider liking and subscribing so that i can bring you more of these videos